All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by John Lightfoot, who's just up the road in whichever way, in Orange County. And uh, John is the founder and CEO of Strategic SEO Solutions. How are you doing, John? Doing well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Excellent. What we're going to talk today about is SEO, outrank and outperform via organic search. Um, well, why, well let, let's start off with just a bit of a baseline. I think a lot of people know, I mean, have heard the term organic search. Some people think they know what it means, whatever, but just explain it just in case people have a misconception of what it is. Of course. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Search engine optimization is uh, the acronym for the SEO is the acronym. So search engine optimization is truly uh, leveraging uh, search engines, typically Google, for example, um, you know, to to uh, excel your visibility. So in other words, it's 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 helping Google to truly understand where you matter most and what your core demo is and how to inject yourself within that search query. Yeah, thank you. That's a great, great explanation. And uh, and then just uh, obviously search engine optimization. And I think people are getting inundated every day by people saying, oh, I'll do your SEO, I'll do your SEO. Um, but what is the difference between somebody who really understands, like your strategic SEO solution, somebody who really understands SEO as opposed to people who are just going to link build or whatever for you? Right. You know, I think uh, the biggest differentiator is simply um, the nurturing of an ecosystem. Uh, when you're quote unquote kind of just doing your SEO, sometimes that's a very templated approach. It's a ticking of boxes. Um, you know, it's very, it's a very much um, a mechanical approach. And whereas there is some technical fortification that can be benefited in that type of uh, a, a, an approach, really SEO needs to be looked at um, from a far bigger purview. It is on site and the, and the fortification of the technical components of a website, absolutely sure. But it's, it's more than that. It's, it's also what's happening off site. It's also what's happening within this, this lens of your keyword universe and how is that being nurtured and potentially propagated through your content, through your social media fingerprint, and how all that folds back to have a unified and consistent messaging. Yeah, and I think one of the traps that people often fall into is that, uh, say for keywords, for instance, what, what they do is just maybe go to a competitor and sort of look at, and let's say you look at competitive keywords and then they think, okay, those sound like we should use those as well. Um, but there doesn't there there doesn't always seem to be much strategy behind it apart from copy the competition. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I think you know for 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 the approach that I take is 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 one that sometimes is a little bit interesting at first. I think for uh, for discovery and brands because I spend a lot of time first building out this very definitive keyword ecosystem and then siloing all of those seed keywords and their semantic partners. What you're speaking to, of course, in the competitive analysis, it's great. It's, it is a part yep. and it's a definitive part that should be uh, performed. But the way I harness that type of information is in learnings, not just about what are the keywords that, that maybe we should be targeting, but what are the keywords that we shouldn't be targeting? When we take a look at competitors, there's a lot of learnings around the notion of here's a space that's being very effective but then there's also the other space of here's areas where, where there's a lot of effort being placed that isn't effective. Maybe it's not effective in conversions or it's not effective, effective in, in engagement or time on site. So I think it's important to learn that. But then we have to look beyond that and truly understand what are the value propositions and how, how are we actually going to help Google to understand that and place us within the journey of the discovery or the, the funnel uh, organically via search so that we're part of the narrative. Yeah, so, so explain for our, our, our audience a little bit more about what Google does and what Google is looking for uh, through your SEO. Yeah, it's, you know, it's interesting. Google's algorithms change often. And so I think that answer evolves. Today, the, what Google's looking for, and, and, and if I could crystallize it down, is, is two things, one of which is authority. They truly are looking for authority. And maybe another word to say that is trust. Um, and the second segmentation, and this is where many fall short in the SEO world, is consistency. So if we back up for a moment and we think about authority, I often say, you know, building authority builds brands. That's what's happening today. 
when Google takes a look at, at a website, it's really looking to, to first impart what is it that you're communicating as a company? Who is it that you believe you should reach and why do you believe you matter? Google will take note of that. They'll certainly understand that if, if, if the site is technically sound. But in all honesty, in my opinion, I don't know that they truly care once they've heard it. They, they've noted it, but they don't yeah. put a lot of weight in it. It's when the, the, the off-site signals, it's when other industry professionals or when other consumers or when others are talking about you in the same way you speak about yourself, that there now becomes a trust that's built. And that, uh, that builds authority. And they very much care about that today. And the other segment, consistency, um, that, that's, you know, it's, it's interesting because so many times in the SEO world, there'll be a tactic that's, that's executed or attempted. And it might simply be content. Hey, let's post two blogs uh, a week, uh, every week. And that happens for a month or two. And now we check a box and say, okay, we tried the content. How did it work? And everybody just pauses. That, that's not what Google's looking for. They're just looking for, they'd rather have fewer pieces of content, right? That are very engaging, very strong quality, but ongoing and with a cadence and consistency that builds. Yeah, and I think that's the, I think that's part of the key here. Why some people struggle with it is it's that consistency, and and also understanding, as you said, understanding how to build authority and, and being careful and being intentional about the the content that you put out there and the relationships you have, the backlinks you get, all of that stuff. I think a lot of it has to do with, as you said, is having a real plan, sticking to it, and then consistently executing. Because here's another thing, John, is uh, it's very hard sometimes to explain to people how long SEO may take to be truly effective because we live in this instant gratification world it's like oh i started my seo yesterday like why isn't why isn't my site blowing up with with visitors that's true you know it's interesting and, and here's something that um that that i find often raises an eyebrow of interest what you what you mentioned is it has been traditionally very true you would ask an seo how long is it going to take before we see some mm -hmm. roi some results the movement of needle and really, most SEOs would say, well, you know, it's, it's hard to tell. It's really hard to say. You know, it could take six months. It could take a year or two years. It's really in Google's hands. And that felt like a very honest and transparent answer. In fact, for a very long time, it was. But I feel like that landscape is shifting today. And the reason I feel like it's shifting is because years ago, Google really held their algorithms closely to their best. We didn't know as SEOs exactly what they wanted. That's changing. You know, Google's opening up that, that algo, those doors behind the curtain and explaining to everybody, the, this is what we are looking for. Whether it's the Panda algorithm, which guides us in our content, or the Penguin algo that guides us within our link building, or EAT, that uh, expertise, authority, and trust that's guiding us on how we're building it. They're letting us know exactly what they're looking for, right? Even with their core web vitals and the page experience, we know technically what they're looking for. So in knowing what they're looking for and layering that onto a website, we should be able to say, here's a, how far outside of algo compliance we are. And therefore, this is how long it's going to take to get into compliance and start seeing that progress. So there are actually ways to be predictive in that nature and, and be pretty close to it strategically. Yeah, no, that that's that's fascinating. And again, it kind of underlines the need to to have the expertise or to work with experts like yourself. And I think that's I think that's part of the part of the issue today with a lot of SEO is that either people hire somebody who maybe has some SEO skills and you know they try and develop them, or they just outsource quickly to somebody and say, do our, our SEO. But again, as I come back to it's that whole strategic ongoing approach to it. And I don't think people understand how many different uh, tentacles this has. Agreed. I think it's, it is that. It is sometimes I refer to it as kind of this cross-pollination. Mm -hmm. SEO does not live in its own silo. It should be the epicenter of things that are happening, whether it's in PR, and, and, and whether it's in your social media captions, whether it's in the content you're writing for the site or for offsite. It needs to, to, to touch those spaces and, and resonate through. Um, and the other part of it, too, is it really is not a, a set and forget or it, it's not necessarily a, a one time cleanup. I mean, websites live and breathe. 
And as, as we watch them closely, we see that, you know, 404 pages will occur, you know, pages that don't load properly or redirects or redirect chains occur or, or you know, links are broken. Even external link, there could be something that you're citing to a, an authoritative source, but that link no longer works and you now have an external broken link. It needs, you know, regular auditing and, and remediation just to keep it healthy. Um, so, yes, I, I, it does touch a lot yeah. of spaces. It does. And I think that's an interesting point, though, too, as well as the fact that it uh, it's a living, breathing thing. It does need a lot of touches. It does need constant uh, tweaking. And I think that's the hard part sometimes with people who are who are used to getting a solution, implementing it and then sitting back and watching the results. I mean, a lot of SEO, as you would know better than than I would, is is the ongoing tweaking and changing and 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 just adjusting as you go. I mean, that's a large, large part of it. It is. It is. You know, I daily watch very closely, not just the metrics that surround success. In other words, a lot of times when I'm speaking to clients and we're looking very closely at their metrics, we're saying, well, what does the impression share look like? How many impressions, you know, did we receive? Mm -hmm. And what are the rankings? Where are we ranking today? Are they moving north? Those are great metrics to watch. But beyond that, and to your point, we also have to look at engagement. In other words, if Google looks at you and says, you know what? For these three keywords, which are very critical to you, um, we're going to go ahead and give you some some lift, some exposure. We're going to increase your impression share, up go the needles. That's excellent, but that is not success. Success is looking beyond that. Once you were found within search, what happened with engagement? What is the click-through rate? If people are not clicking through, then it won't be long before Google then starts to, to truncate your visibility and think that you weren't very effective in that space. So with regards to the ongoing modification, I'm always looking, testing the title tags, the descriptions, everything to evoke the clicks. It's not just being there, but it's being relevant in that space. Yeah, and, and I think that also speaks then again to what you mentioned a few minutes ago about the fact that SEO doesn't exist in a silo or in a vacuum, because that's a, that's an excellent point. I mean, you can do all the greatest work in the world and you can drive attention and traffic, but when people get to your site, if the message isn't consistent, if it's not easy to find what they want, if you don't have good call to actions or whatever, it all falls apart. And those, that means you have to, that means that other people parts of the organization need to be involved heavily and, and understanding and the SEO needs to be totally integrated. Absolutely. You know, not to go too deep off into another vein, but just to touch on briefly, you know, there's CRO as well as conversion mm -hmm. rate optimization. I always say that's the other side of the coin to SEO. And the reason why is to, to your point, if, 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 if we have an audience that visits the site, and they bounce, they, they, they arrive, they don't stay long, they don't move into interior pages, those sorts of things. Um, then what's going to happen again is it's gonna, it's gonna diminish the quality uh, signals to Google about the relevance of the page. And really it's just not a great user experience overall. But CRO helps people stay on the page, engage with the page, spend more time on the site, explore interior pages. And, and, and that's that segment. But the other part of it too, is just the, the, the connecting of the dots, the bridging. So in other words, whatever we're saying in the title and the description in search, that they land on a page where that narrative continues. It has to, it cannot be an abrupt stop. And, and so I think it, it, it needs to be thought through beyond the click. Yeah, no, I think that's a, I think that's a great point about the fact is uh, that it needs to lead to something that's consistent with what brought you there in the first place. Um, otherwise, there's, otherwise there's a dissonance, isn't there? I mean, you... Uh, so um, let me ask you in the, in the last few minutes we have here, um, put on your, put on your, or take out your crystal ball. Um, so where does, where is SEO going? Yeah, SEO is, is, is definitely going in the space of um, authority, um, of trust, of, in, in a lot of times it's referred to as domain authority, sometimes domain rating, page authority, things of that nature. There's no doubt, um, you know, if, if, if we look at it, um, you know, brand skepticism is at an all-time high. And it's not mm -hmm. just for consumers, it's for Google as well. There's nearly a quarter million new websites globally every single day, and Google cannot trust them all. So the question is, is how will they trust you and your brand? And so that does fold into this EAT algorithm, this expertise, authority, and trust. That's been here, but it's going to even continue further in 2022. I think content has always been at the center, but that's going to continue as well. But the, 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 you know, kind of technicals around the content, we have to start understanding that content is an art 
but also a science. And, and, and the melding of those two is really going to be a space I think where we're going to see success. Um, connected devices, so voice search, massive opportunity there, no doubt about it. And, um, and it's, it's been kind of growing um, as, as far as popularity and the understanding around those long tail and extended voice search keyword and how to nurture them. Um, and the last segment of it too is, of course, um, if we think about schema, if we think about how to be the answer uh, within voice search, that kind of position zero. So, so, so nurturing kind of those FAQs and being a thought leader so that Google serves your answer as the result to the query, that's going to be a big uh, part of 2022 as well. Uh, no, that, that's absolutely, absolutely fascinating. Just, um, just explain a little bit more about voice search, because I'm sure that piqued the interest of some people. Uh, absolutely. I mean, in many ways, most all of us are connected uh, via voice, um, and you know whether it's our our, our televisions, whether whether it's uh, Alexa, who will probably pick up and respond to me at the moment, uh, <laughs> whether it's uh, you know uh, Siri or Google or any of it, um, we're constantly interacting, and we're interacting more and more with our voice. And so, but when we do, if we look at the the percentile. The majority of those interactions are coming from queries. They're, you know, what, what, you know, a restaurant near me, or, 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 or what's the best X, Y, and Z? What, you know, what's the best, um, you know, food or, or, or shoes or, or perfume or anything of these nature. You know, even, even books recently, uh, we were using it for what's the best titles uh, that were released this month. But we're asking and engaging in, a, in with these connected devices with our devo- with our voice more and more. And so the question now becomes. How do we serve up via search uh, organic results to being part of the, the narrative there and answering those questions, but backing it into our brands, our value propositions, our services that we provide? We can do that. We can do that. And, and the, the way that we're going to want to do that is going to be through schema markup and, and, and answering the questions in a way that Google can crawl us out as answers and serve that back uh, to the query. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, no, that's fascinating because I, I guarantee you, probably if you asked 100 people and said to them, oh, do you use voice search? They'd probably go, no, I never heard of it. And then you'd say, well, do you ever ask Siri something? Yeah, all the time. Well, there you go, voice search. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, well, listen, John, this has been fantastic. All of John's information is going to be below this video and links to strategic SEO solutions. Um, but before we go, John, please do tell people just a little bit more about what you do. Absolutely, thank you. I, I like to think of us as a bespoke uh, SEO uh, service provider. In other words, um, SEO is all we do, and um, and you know it's 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 our epicenter. We live, breathe, and sleep SEO, and it's never templated. I mean, it's really just about understanding our our clients, the brands, what it is that's going to help them to succeed and thrive, and then creating customized SEO strategies to help them do just that. And so it's a passion and uh, very much looking forward to, to helping uh, companies thrive. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I would encourage people to go check out Strategic SEO Solutions. Um, I'm a big believer in going after expertise because these areas just become more and more complex. So you need somebody like John and his team who, are, who live and breathe this stuff because it's kind of not something you can do in your spare time. All right. Well, uh, thanks again, John. Uh, thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you.